So my very first Apple Watch was the Apple Watch Series Zero. And while I did like that watch, I just found at the time that I bought it, it just didn't have all these features that I really needed. And I pretty much sold it off and I just didn't have an Apple Watch for a while. That wasn't until recently I saw one of Potato Jet's videos where he was demonstrating the Apple Watch and it had this feature that just made me want to get it. And what that was, was the camera app widget, which is a native app on the Apple Watch. And what it lets you do is you can start the camera app just with a press of a button. And not only that, but you could see the framing of the shot. So that kind of blew my mind and it just made me have to get an Apple Watch. You guys might already know about this feature, but let me just show you guys right now. So right now my iPhone is off. You can see there that the screen is black. So I have this widget on my Apple Watch, which I'm gonna press right now. And as you can see, right when I did that, it opens up the camera. I have like a small preview of the framing. It's not super high quality, but it's good enough to see that you're in frame. And the cool thing about this is you can even zoom in and out with this wheel. So if I want to zoom in closer, I could just click that wheel. You could even start the recording from your watch. So I'm gonna do that right now. So right now it is recording. What you're seeing now is a recording that I just started with the Apple Watch. And you can zoom in, which I'm, I'll show you right now. So there it is, I zoomed in. That's a closer view, and if you want a wider view, you can zoom all the way out, and it'll even switch to the wide-angle lens, which is kind of crazy. So even though it has that feature, I thought it was like completely awesome, but one of the things that really ruins it is the audio, because I am standing a good, I would say about 15 feet away from my camera, and if you want to listen to the audio coming from the iPhone, this is what it sounds like. And you can see it really doesn't sound good, but the reason why it sounds kind of decent is because I have a Rode Wireless Go 2 attached to my shirt, which is recording audio externally, and I'm gonna sync that up in post later. And then I also have the GoPro also recording audio, so in case like one of them fails, I have like multiple audio sources. But what I was thinking would be really cool is while you started the recording with the Apple Watch, if the Apple Watch could also record the audio and then use the audio from the Apple Watch instead of using the audio from the iPhone. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to do this automatically where it'll just record from your Apple Watch and it'll switch over. It'll automatically sync the audio to your iPhone. But what I did find out is you can record audio with your Apple Watch externally, and then you could use that audio and sync it up in post. So that's pretty much what I wanna demonstrate with you guys right now. So the first thing I do is I open that Apple Watch app and I'll start a recording. And then I'm gonna start a recording right now with my Apple Watch to record audio. And the app that I'm gonna use is called Just Press Record. It is a paid app. It costs like a few dollars. I don't really remember exactly how much. I'll just put it up somewhere on the screen how much it costs. And you do have the option of using the native app, the native voice recording app on the iPhone. But the reason why I recommend using the Just Press Record app is because it records at a higher bit rate. And for my tests, it does sound a lot better if you use the Just Press Record app. So here we go. Right now it's already recording. Um, so I'm gonna press the Just Press Record app. There you go, it's recording. So the audio that you're listening to right now is from the iPhone and I'm gonna switch over to the audio from the Apple Watch. So this is the audio you're listening to from the Apple Watch. How does this sound compared to the iPhone? I'm assuming it sounds better just because it's so close to the source, which is my mouth. And there's actually a lot of things going on around me. There's like waves from the water. I think that's actually all I hear right now, but the waves from the water are pretty loud. So yeah, this is actually kind of pr a pretty cool solution. Like just with your iPhone and your Apple Watch, you're able to like take pretty cool videos with like decent audio. But one of the things you'll notice that's an issue is even though this is recording audio from my watch, it does change depending on like the distance from my mouth. So if it's like right here, it sounds pretty good. But if I put it like down here, probably not as good as it would be if it was like right up to here, right? So I did think of a solution for this and the solution is really just to like clip it onto your shirt, similar to like this Rode Wireless Go. So I, I have thought about a couple ways to do it. I saw somebody was like selling a case, which uh, kind of turns your Apple Watch into a clip and then you could like clip it onto your shirts. But the other solution that I found was putting it magnetically onto your shirt, which actually did work because I already had a magnet from the Rode Wireless Go Clip that I bought separately. And I just wanted to see if it worked. And the, the back of the Apple Watch is magnetic because if you really think about it, if you charge your Apple Watch, it uses the magnet and that clips on. So I was thinking maybe I could just use the magnet from the back of the Apple Watch and clip it onto my shirt. And it turns out you can. I'm gonna show that to you guys right now. All right guys, so this is the magnet that I'm talking about. This clip for the Rode Wireless Go, you do have to buy this separately but it comes with this really strong magnet, which you kind of use to like, basically you put your shirt here and then it clamps onto your shirt. And that's what I'm gonna be using with my Apple Watch. To do this, I'm obviously gonna have to take off my Apple Watch. You are gonna have to remove the straps. Well, technically you don't have to remove it, but it is better for this demonstration if you take it off. And then basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that magnet 
and you're gonna clamp it onto your shirt like that. Yeah, it kind of just sticks on the back. So I'm actually using the Apple Watch to check my framing. So yeah, basically I'm gonna put this right here on my shirt. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So it is still recording audio. Let me actually zoom out again. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, it's still recording audio. The audio that you're listening to now is from my Apple Watch. If I'm standing this close to my iPhone, probably the audio is not too bad. But really the further I get, the worse it's gonna be. So this is the audio from the iPhone. And I could even like turn around. Since this is gonna be synced in post, it doesn't matter if I have line of sight or anything like that. But yeah, I'm just walking really far away. And the audio that you're listening to is probably decent because like I said, right now it's coming from the Apple Watch. Just for demonstration purposes, I'll switch to the Rode Wireless Go 2 so you guys can see how that sounds like. And really, it's pretty loud around me. Like there's a, uh, yeah, these waves are pretty loud. Um, yeah, right now I am really far from my, my iPhone. So at this distance, I'll just switch to the audio from the iPhone. I'm assuming you can't even hear me right now because it just seems like I'm pretty far and these waves are pretty loud. So again, I'll switch back to the Apple Watch. This is the audio that you're listening to from the Apple Watch. I'm assuming it sounds like relatively good because it's pretty close to my mouth. And for my testing that I've done previously, it works pretty well. So once again, just for demonstration purposes, the audio that you're listening to now is coming from the iPhone. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now I'm gonna switch over to the Apple Watch. This is the audio coming from the Apple Watch. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And also just to test that one more audio source, I'm gonna switch over to the Rode Wireless Go 2, which is clipped right here to my shirt. This is the audio now that you're listening to is coming from the Rode Wireless Go 2. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And yeah, how does that sound? I'm really curious, cause uh, I've actually never tested all three at once. So it'll be interesting. All right guys, so we're back to the editing room and I'm just gonna show you really quick how to sync the audio that you just recorded with your Apple Watch to the video from your iPhone. Earlier, I airdropped these files to my Mac. So it's in my downloads folder and I'm just gonna drag it into my events folder. So there it is, it is now in my project. So the cool thing about the Just Press Record app is that any recordings get automatically saved to iCloud Drive. So you don't even have to go to like your Apple Watch and like try to transfer it over. If you go to your iCloud Drive, it should automatically be there. So here we go. This is my iCloud Drive here. You can see there's a folder called Just Press Record. And I know that the one that I need is from June 25th. So this is the audio file here. I drag that into my project. We're gonna do it the old school way because I know this, this method, um, you can do it on any NLE, which is a non-linear editor. But basically any kind of editing software should be able to do this. Uh, the one that I'm using today is called Final Cut Pro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the video file into my timeline. And then next thing I'm gonna do is drag my audio file just beneath it. And what you're gonna try to do is you're gonna try to line up the waveforms. What a lot of people do just to make it easier is they'll clap and then that way you'll see three peaks and it'll be really easy to line up your audio. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. So I'm just going to have to like try to figure it out myself. This might take me a bit. I might have to fast forward this. So I think that's it right there. I could be wrong. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Oh yeah, that looks pretty accurate. Let's listen to it. Yeah, I'm just showing you guys right now. So that is pretty similar. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to zoom in and get those, uh, those peaks exactly where they need to be. Sometimes you, have, you just have to change it one frame at a time and just make sure everything lines up. That looks pretty accurate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable the audio from the iPhone file. So that way I only hear the audio from the from the other um, Just Press Record file. Okay, so we're gonna listen to this now. A cool solution. Um... So yeah, that sounds perfectly fine. It looks like the audio is lined up with what I'm saying. iPhone, probably the audio is not too bad, but really the further I get, the worse it's gonna. So yeah, you could really see that the audio lines up perfectly. That is pretty much how you sync the audio up manually. You can kind of see that if you're doing that for a lot of files, that can get pretty cumbersome. So there is a faster solution to this, but unfortunately this doesn't work on all editors. It just works on some of them, mainly the, the ones that cost money. So in Final Cut, how you do that is you highlight these two files and then you hit right click and you hit synchronize clips. 
then you're just gonna use audio for synchronization and then you're gonna disable audio video components. This will automatically disable the audio from the iPhone file. And basically it just does it all in one step. You could also use these custom settings, but I'm pretty happy with the settings it's gonna pick. So I'm just gonna hit okay and see how fast that was guys. Uh, it automatically generates a synchronized clip here in our events folder. And all we have to do is drag that into our timeline and let's listen to it. Apple Watch is magnetic because if you really think about it, if you charge your Apple Watch, um, it uses the magnet and that clip. So you can see guys, it's perfectly synchronized already. If you wanted to make sure it was like super synchronized, you can hit a shift G to go into it. And then you could hit command plus to zoom in and make sure that the waveforms do in fact line up. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much how you do it easily. Really easy in Final Cut Pro to synchronize the clips. So just as a little bonus, I just want to show you one more way to synchronize the audio. So if you guys recorded a video like how I did it in this example, I used multiple cameras and I used multiple microphones. And you can just imagine how much of a hassle that would be to synchronize all of those in post. But luckily, Final Cut and I'm sure other software that I've never tried might also have the feature, but it's called a multicam clip. So I'm going to show you guys how this works and basically what this does is it synchronizes all the audio and all the videos into one clip and then you could selectively choose and post which video clip you want to use and which audio clip you want to use and it's just going to magically do it. So let me show you guys how to do this. So I have already imported all of my video and audio files into this project but what you're going to want to do first before you do this multicam thing is you're going to want to go into all these files. Uh, go into the info panel over here in your inspector and make sure you rename the camera name to whatever device it was. That way it will properly line up when you make the multicam clip. If you don't do this, it's going to make a, a new angle for every single file and you don't want that. You want just like if there's two iPhone clips, you want that to be one angle. So that's basically how it works. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've already renamed all of these files. So you can see this is the iPhone. This file over here is from my Galaxy. This file over here is from the Rode Wireless Go. So I've already went in and renamed all of them. So then what you're gonna to wanna to do is just select all the files in this project. And you're gonna right click and you're gonna hit new multicam clip. And then just make sure you have use audio for synchronization selected and then just rename it to like something you find useful. I'll just call it multicam. And then you could also use custom settings if you want to like customize any of these settings, but I'm pretty happy with the default. So I'm just going to hit okay. And just like that guys, that happened in real time. Like I did not speed that up with these new M1 processors. It just makes the workflow like so much faster. It's, it's kind of insane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this new file. I just generated called multicam and drag it into my timeline. And you could see that it generated this file. If I hit, shift G you can see what it did so it took like the galaxy files and it synchronized it and basically all these files are lined up with the audio it's actually crazy that it's able to do it that quickly so I'm gonna get go out of here and then I'm gonna open this thing called an angle viewer at least that's what I think it's called so you can see here guys as I drag on my timeline like these are the different cameras that I recorded with and this is the different microphones that I recorded with and these are all synced up so like if I wanted this shot to pick like the iPhone, let's just say I wanted it to pick this video. And then let's, I wanted the audio to be from like my Rode Wireless Go. I would just pick the Rode Wireless Go. So right now it's using this video with the Rode Wireless Go audio. So let's listen to it. All I hear right now, but the waves from the water are pretty loud. So yeah, that's kind of crazy. If I wanted to pick the iPhone video, I could do that. So this is the video from the iPhone and the audio from the Rode Wireless Go. Let's make sure I'm still in frame here. Yeah, it's all synced up in post. I didn't even have to do that much work. All I really did was I hit right click and I hit new multicam clip and then you could like select between them. It's actually mind blowing how like this kind of stuff is possible now with today's technology. But yeah, that, that was pretty much it guys. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. Hopefully you learned something from it. If there's anything that you want to ask me, just let me know in the comment section below. It was fun making this. Cross fingers that I'll make more videos in the future. Let me know if there's anything you want to see.